Hello and welcome to another live session. Today we are talking about the three steps to transform your business bookkeeping, or sorry, your bookkeeping business for ultimate growth. So we're going to be covering off a lot of topics today. Really excited while everyone's logging on um, and while we're going live across multiple platforms, I'll welcome uh, two speakers that we have with us today. Some of them are familiar faces because I know we're going into the pure bookkeeping groups, but Katrina and Deb, welcome again for day two of our Facebook Lives. For those that missed uh, the call, the, the live yesterday, do you want to just give us a quick introduction on who you each are and, and why we're doing this today? Sure. I'll, I'll start if you like. Uh, so Debbie Roberts, I'm the CEO, uh, sorry, the, the co-founder <laughs> of Pure Bookkeeping. I'm taking over <laughs> Katrina's role as well. Um, uh, I started that 10 years ago with Peter Cook, my business coach, after running my own business for 13 years and uh, and then selling that in 2014. So I grew my bookkeeping business to having 12 staff uh, until I sold it then and I have a passion for small business actually in Australia and globally as well. So this conversation is a global one. Uh, welcome to all our North American friends and counterparts. Um, it, it, I'm passionate about small business. It's the backbone of each of our countries and it's the bookkeepers that actually support small business. And so what we are doing is helping to transform the bookkeeping industry by helping great bookkeepers grow their business. Excellent, Katrina. Yeah, so I, um, Katrina, so I'm the CEO of Pure Bookkeeping. Um, Deb's trying to take my role. <laughs> I'll do <laughs> everything. <laughs> I had a bookkeeping business for over 15 years and I sold it in 2015 and the last five years was the real part where I got into it and took it seriously and built it and, and I became a um, pure bookkeeping licensee in 2011 when I, as I was building it and realised I had no systems and it was like driving me crazy. Um, took on a mentor as well um, and grew it quite quickly, went through all the pain, the pain, um, growing pains as you do and became a mentor when I sold in 2015 and stayed in contact with Deb and became CEO of Pure Bookkeeping in 2019. So loving the journey and helping bookkeepers do um, make their, make a difference in their lives. So that's what we're here for. Excellent. So we're going live today across many platforms, all the Pure Bookkeeping platforms, all the TOA Global platforms. And we're talking about three steps to transform your bookkeeping business for ultimate profit. Yesterday, we really focused around the marketing, having a very clear mission, very clear ideal clients. Today, we're really focusing on that next evolution or that step that a lot of, I think, bookkeepers, when they start the journey, it's just them. And then it's how do I build a team, but continue to focus on profitability. So I'm really excited about the content that we're going to cover off today. For anyone that did miss yesterday's um, live, you can actually go back onto our Facebook platforms and see the video. It is there for you to be able to watch. So you don't have to miss out because you missed the live. But Deb, let's jump into it today. So the first question I get, and, and we get this with a lot of bookkeepers when they come to us and and it's, I suppose, not just bookkeepers, it's accountants, is when do I hire my first person? So mm -hmm. when do you know when is the right time to hire? Yeah, I, th I think it's um, it's a little bit of a mixture between art and science, I think, uh, determining when is the best time, because I think it's a combination of your financial position and also the time that you have or you don't have. Um, and each person's situation will be a little bit different so the way i look at it is firstly look at your time and if you are absolutely crunched you're full up you're working ridiculous hours during the week obviously you're time poor but you're probably reasonably profitable especially if you've not recruited before um, it's just you uh, you're on your own you're doing all the work you're keeping all the profits yourself but that is at a, at a cost and the cost is time, which is obviously precious to all of us and something that we, only, we all have a limited amount of. So when you're looking at that, you, you might look at, oh, I, I desperately need to recruit, which is fair enough. Then you need to look at the financial side of it and say, what can I afford to drop down? Because your income will drop down because you're paying the new bookkeeper a percentage or whatever the rate is. So obviously your your profitability is going to go down. And then it comes back to 
what can I afford? You can get really bookkeeper-ish about that, uh, that thinking, very scientific, very technical about what those numbers are. And that also includes what do you need to live off? What do you need to bring home to support your family or to support yourself? So you crunch those numbers, work out ways that you can cut costs uh, at in your home budgeting, work out ways you can cut costs which will free up a, some more income for you that you can then hand over to the next bookkeeper. So it's a little bit of a balance between time and money um, and it's very individual how you get that working. But really, I think the focus, if you are absolutely full up, you have to make the money side of it work because you can't, it's not sustainable to keep going at that pace uh, where you're working ridiculous hours. Physically, that is not sustainable. Um, so you need to make crunch the numbers and make them work. Yeah, I think that you've covered a really few key points there that I wanted to touch on a little bit further is you've got to go backwards to go forwards. You're running a business and you need to build a business that's not relying on you. It means that personally you can't maximise your revenue and grow a business. There does have to be sacrifices, but you're making a long-term play. You're building a business and taking you out of what essentially I think a lot of people when they start, they've got a job. They're just their own boss. So I think that that's really a key part is that transitioning. And I think that, you know, any successful business really has a team. And I think that's one of the hard things is that, you know, when I talk to bookkeepers and even accountants is when I do bring someone on, they always have this control freak mentality of I'm the best person to do this. No one can do it better than me or I'm the quickest and best to do this. So I'll just do it. And I remember Jack Daly, a um, sales coach in the US a couple of years ago at a conference I was at, he said this wonderful point. He said, if you don't have an EA, you are your own EA. You're doing your own administration. And I relate that back to a lot of, you know, bookkeeping business owners when they've got a, a team, when they've already got an established team or accountants have got an established team, why they they don't have their own EAs. They're, they're, they are doing their own administration work. Mm -hmm. And Deb, this really comes back to, oh, sorry, Katrina, I'm going to ask you this question. How do we stop the control freak in all of us coming out and how do we you know there's a lot of pain points about handing over work so how did you let go of control when you started to bring on your team within your book giving business how did you know what work to give them and have that piece to hand it over instead of going you know what i'll just do it it's just quicker for me too Mm. And this is a very common, as, we, as you've discussed, uh, for bookkeepers to, to hand over, um, to know the right way to do it. And I certainly didn't do it um, right or efficiently at the start. Um, I was holding on to the work to the point where it got to the last minute that the work, you know, it was months down the track and the work still hadn't been done because I hadn't handed it over to Helen, dele hadn't delegated it, hadn't put it in the system for the staff to know to take on that work or allow time for that work. Um, the control, I'd, I'd hold on to it so that I would piece feed the staff. I'd give them a bit of work and then they would not talk to the clients. I wouldn't let them talk to the clients. So then I would, they would ask me the questions. I'd go to the client. The client would answer me. I'd go back to the staff. Um, and this was one of the biggest issues that I had was everything was in my head. The staff couldn't get on with their work. I couldn't um, empower them to be successful in their role because I was the road, road, roadblock. I was the, the pain point, really. Mm -hmm. So it is it is um, allowing you to let that go. It is a mindset shift. Um, and one of the things that I looked at it, it was the E-Myth book where uh, Michael Gerber had talked about the, the different domains of the business and you, you know, you put in your face in each one of those, you know, that you're the leader, you're the worker, you're the marketing, you're the HR, you're everything. And this understanding that, you know, parts of that organisational chart is a bookkeeper, is a technician, is the person that you need to delegate it over to. So they need to take control of that role. So it is, it's a lot of planning and it is um, a comfort level. So as you transition, over to, you know, passing the work over, delegating work over to somebody else, letting that go, letting that control go, you will understand that it is okay. Your business will not blow up or, you know, fail because you have let go of control. And if you put systems in place to make sure 
that they know what they're doing, when to do it and how to do it, and you've got a system in place to review that work, then it's, it's you know, what we do is not rocket science. It's not, it shouldn't be that hard. If we have the right work and put the staff in and review them, then we have a more of a comfort that things are going to be okay. So I think, I think you just touched on a word there is the comfort because no one wants to let go of control. Control is hard. I'm a control freak. I bought an accounting. I bought a booking business because I didn't like the not controlling that when I had the financial planning business. And I think that's one of the challenges is that comfort piece. But if I'm going to lead on to that, you've mentioned about systems. But how can we standardise the process so that we do feel in control? And I know that you mentioned the e-myth and correct me if I'm wrong, Deb, but I'm pretty sure you wrote an e-myth for bookkeepers. Um, yeah. How do we standardise the process so that as a business owner, we can feel in control of releasing that work? Because it is, it's, it's a challenging thing of letting someone else do or take over from your baby and something that you know you're good at doing. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, quoting, not verbatim, but quoting Michael Gerber, he uh, always, his premise is, uh, don't trust the staff, trust the systems that you set up. And I know whenever something went wrong in my business, if a staff member missed something or made a mistake around something else, and why, you know, rather than get upset about it, I actually pointed the finger at me. And every single time something went wrong, I would say, what system do I need to create in order to avoid that happening again? And the each time it was like building blocks. It was building that. And then I'd think, right, I've got that covered. Now everyone's doing the same thing. And then someone else would do something that I thought, wow, I didn't think that that would happen. I, you know, it's that when I said yesterday about the one of the common mistakes made is that people assume, I mean, Katrina mentioned it's not rocket science. And yet, uh, if you put 10 bookkeepers in a room, there are 10 different ways of doing the same thing. Some yeah. of those will be right. Hopefully, most of those will be right. Some of them will definitely be wrong. Um, and that is the, the dilemma that people, that everyone running a bookkeeping and accounting, uh, a business running a bookkeeping arm of their business are going to encounter. And I think it's, look, it took me years to, obviously, in, in my own business, it was, it was a, a block on top of a block on top of a block of building these systems. But I, what I found was that one of the frustrations I found was how difficult it was to train my staff. So when I put a new staff member on, I then had to train them according to what were my systems, what were my standards. And that took months, really, because and mostly it was sitting beside them or in these days it could even be run, you can do this all virtually, you Zoom meetings and things like that. But if, because I didn't initially, because I didn't have the systems documented, I had to tell them what system I needed to create. And that was terribly time consuming. So what I ended up creating and what we've got in the Pure Bookkeeping system is a three to four hour training program, which covers all the common and not so common um, areas that bookkeepers need to, to work in you know, things like assets, uh, repairs and maintenance, um, donations, all those sort of things that if you had 10 bookkeepers in a room, uh, they'd all be doing it differently and some of them would be wrong. So you've got to start with when you are onboarding that person, what, how are you going to train them according to what are your best practices? And if you can get a training program set up so that they complete the training program over there, and then they come and start working for you. Then it's a matter of what are they doing? So they've learned that you've taught them in the training program what they do on a daily basis, how you process assets, how you attach tax invoices and bills and receipts to all the transactions in the software, how you put descriptions in if you need, how you automate some of the processes in the system. And it's also dependent on client-specific instructions. So there are two 
parts to the systems that you need to develop. One is the training program. The other then is client-specific instructions. And actually, there's a third one as well. There are general instructions that are used across, doesn't matter what software you're using, doesn't matter um, what your client-specific instructions are, you need checklists for so that they do this bank rec, do to follow this process at month end, make sure there are um, tax invoices, there's receipts attached to all of the transactions that are necessary. Not all of them have to. Which ones have to? You've got to make a lot of decisions in your business about what is best practice. Don't make the assumption that everyone is going to do it the same way. In fact, you can make the assumption that everyone will do it differently, slightly differently. So you have to standardise the way that's done. In terms of profitability for your business, so much time is wasted. Um, it's training staff, when I say wasted, um, if you can do it more efficiently, I wasted a lot of time training staff months, as I said. I had I didn't have the right, the right people doing the right work. I ended up having supervisors because I had junior bookkeepers and, and they were only trained up to this level. I then had senior bookkeepers who had to check all their work because my systems weren't sufficient enough. So it's a it's a combination of, of things that you are very detailed in the pure bookkeeping system. We've got nine key checklists that you use throughout the year that will enable you to guarantee the quality of the work and deliver repeatable, scalable excellence. It's what are your key checklists that you are going to create in your business? In the pure bookkeeping system, there are hundreds of steps in all of these. There are, we've got manual instructions which explain each of the steps what process are you going to use, where are you going to store all this information so that your um, bookkeepers can uh, uh, access it. Uh, you need to create checklists. Are they going to be online? Is it going to be in a workflow management program? There's a lot of things to consider when setting these up. But remember, Nick spoke that this is, yes, it's painful, <laughs> um, uh, but this is for the long term. This is about the profitability of your business. When I didn't have these in place, my business nearly went under. I had to put money into the business because I had the wrong systems, the wrong staff. I was too top heavy. I needed, to, and so I actually took a year off. I didn't do anything else other than focus on my systems because that's how important that was. I knew I was not, I was hitting a roadblock. I was not able to grow to the next level. And I said, I'm taking the next year off and I'm going to devote my time to creating these systems. It's hardly taking a year off. It's actually, <laughs> you probably worked harder in that year. But I think the key part with this is if you want to scale and grow a business, you need to have a consistent way of delivering the internal process and experience to clients. And you need to go, and I want to reinforce this, you need to go backwards to go forwards. And I think one of the challenges that I find, though, is that people will not bring on that next team member because they don't have the process or mm -hmm. they're, they're not willing to invest in their people because they don't have the process and systems. And I think that that's always, you know, it's a chicken and egg situation or the horse before the cart, you know, which one do you do? Well, the reality is you need capacity and you can build this as you go. We have a way that's called the tollway. It's how, how everyone answers the phone, how everyone does an email, how everything within our businesses, we've built this process, but it's taken us seven years to have a manual mm -hmm that can now tell everyone how to do everything and it's constantly being updated. And I think that, Katrina, I wanna ask you this question, but now we know that we, we need to hire and we wanna hire and we know that we need systems and process, whether we've got them or whether we come and, and um, I suppose, come to your bookkeeping and just get them all because you've got them all. What, when, like, what role do we hire? Like, how do we know what role is going to maximise? It's our first hire. We want to get it right. Do I go with a junior? Do I go with a senior? Like, what, what, how do we know? Like, how did you do it? Yeah, it's, uh, it is a, it's, it's something that people just jump into. They just jump in and say, I need somebody, and they'll just go and find somebody. They'll hire somebody. But you, for, I guess, the future success and the ultimate profit of your business is to plan it out a little bit more. So what I recommend to our, our bookkeepers is that you analyse the workload in your office at the moment. 
So what what work are you doing for your clients? At what you know frequencies you're doing them? How many hours? I, I have a spreadsheet that I go right down to how many hours per month per client for what level of work, and it does take our our, our bookkeepers. Uh, quite a while to do it's not a, a quick exercise but it's a permanent exercise and it's one that um it opens their eyes amazingly when they do this exercise so you're understanding that you as the business owner are doing level one bookkeeping work all the way through to your bass reviews to your advisory and also the staff that you've hired the the, the staff that you've put on that are you're um, perhaps paying high level of income are also doing this level one admin um, type of work so once you've documented it out and it's uh, you know as i said it takes a while the planning in this then you can identify how many hours per month um, that you have in level one work and level two work and level three work so that you can match the skill level of your staff that you've already got and put those staff into the higher end work and it's again it's a it's a bit of art and science it's not like you are going to put just your high level staff working on you know 30 different clients just at this end it's sitting down and working out you know what clients can be transitioned over to what staff and making sure that you do have a different variety of staff as well it's not just all bass agents book um you know high quality bookkeepers uh, it is important to have lower skilled bookkeepers to get them involved in the lower end of the work, the you know the scanning or the, the you know the, a lot of the level one, level two work, and train them up, and then train your level two or three people um, up as well. So if you've got somebody that doesn't understand being a bass agent, but they're a good bookkeeper, train them up the up the hierarchy so that you've got you've got that journey for not only for your staff but also the success of your business because as you are promoting them they are understanding all of that lower level and now they're trained up for a high level and take your business um, forward and get you off the books that's that's our ultimate game is to get you off the books totally and i love that i mean you mentioned a real few key things that i want to highlight there so the first one is and this is the biggest mistake I see a lot of, or one of the biggest mistakes a lot of accountants and bookkeepers make is they don't understand how much work they've got for the business. So they don't understand the amount of hours of work and then they don't have that matched against how much capacity they have with either themselves or with their existing team. So I think the first one is, is building out how much capacity do we have and then linking a people strategy to that and going right over the next one, two, three years, these are our financial targets so how's that link back to the people? And then what type of people, like you said, level one, level two, level three, and I think that really comes back to that point around the right people doing the right work at the right time, but ultimately the right cost. And I yeah. see too many owners, I see too many, particularly um, bookkeepers when they're starting off, they're doing everything. And you, know, you could hire someone to do the administration and manage your emails and respond to clients immediately offshore in a global team environment for $10 an hour, but you're, you know your charge out rates 150 dollars an hour and you're doing that type of work so it's really around how do i build out the team structure to get the right people on the work and you know too many bookkeepers doing too much admin work and that should be done by someone that's really great at doing admin someone that loves doing admin because we want to all do meaningful work and when we talk about retaining staff they want to be doing meaningful work they don't want to be doing work that you know yes they can do it but you know a lot of them will think you know this is below me and I don't want to be doing that because it doesn't fulfill me when I come to work and they will then go and look for another job. And I think that's why a lot of people are worried. What happens if I train someone off and they leave? Well, what about if you don't have someone? It's always you're stuck doing it. So that really, I suppose, lead me. And I love a lot of the points you've both made today to my final question before we wrap things up is, um, Deb, I'm going to ask you this one. I love that you guys have built a system to identify the different levels of a business and the resources required for each. I know that last week we had a real deep dive. We've been partners for a long time now, but mm -hmm. I reached out and said, look, I want to deep dive into your system again. I just need to see it. And I loved what I went through that, the, the process, the systems, the training that's linked to that, everything's there. And I think you, you've done an amazing job in building that out. But I know there's some resources that you're going to give out everyone that's listening today away, but I want to, I suppose, ask you, you know, why did you even build those resources? Like, what was the initial problem that it solved for you that then you created this resource to be able to solve that for others? 
Yeah. The, the first thing with the business blueprint, I found it very, when I was working with Peter Cook, when he was my business coach and working out when I'm going to grow and what's the next step and things like that, I found it very hard to visualise. I need like a picture of something and rather than just words or, or just talking about it. And um, so he created uh, what we call the Bookkeeping Business Blueprint, which is using a martial arts metaphor, actually, of white belt to black belt and putting on $100,000 a year over five or six years, if that's what you want to do. But also when you, when you need to put on staff, it shows you the profitability at that time, how many days bookkeeping you'll be doing. So it's like a, a business uh, plan on a page really. And it represents the kind of profits you could expect with a highly systematized business. And I think that, that really is the, the foundation of of where it gave me the, the vision of where I needed to go. And then I was able to put in the, okay, well, how? Now I've got the why and the wherefores. How do I actually put that in place? And I think one of the things that I would say to anyone watching this, even if it's the recording later, is don't aim for perfection. Uh, Nick said earlier, you know, people are worried that they, they don't want to put on staff until they've got all their systems perfectly in place. That actually won't happen. So it, you, it will never be perfect. There will always, it is a work in progress. That's the reality of it. Um, and you, so just start and get your staff member because if you're already up to here and you're working ridiculous hours, there is no time to take a year off and, and develop your own systems. So the reality is when you put on the staff member, what's really important is that you have a conversation with them and you say, we're going to work together to develop some systems and documents and processes. So as we do this, I'm going to train you how I do things, what is best practice for me, and you're going to document those. And that will be the beginning of your systems. The other, the other tip that I would give everyone is start, if you haven't started, start with the doc, documenting the client's bookkeeping manual. So this is the client-specific processes for how things are done. If you don't have a client's bookkeeping manual, you cannot hand over to a staff member. They want to know how many staff, you know, what what is the process for this client? Where do I, what, what software do they use? How many staff do they have? What's the payroll? When is that happening? All those things that you've got in your head, that's where you start documenting your systems and getting that out of your head. Yeah, I love it. I think you've covered so much. So we'll definitely put the link um, for the blueprint into the comments. So for anyone that is watching this live and they can't find it, just reach out to Deb or Katrina and we can cover that off. It's coming up on the screen now for anyone that is watching this. Um, so we've covered a lot of content today. So obviously yesterday we spoke about the marketing side of it, having a mission on knowing your ideal clients. Today we talked about that one big topic, which I love to talk about, which is that stage of evolution of growing team members and handing work over and knowing how and when and why, um, and then ultimately building the process and systems. So we've covered a lot of content. And the good news for everyone listening to this is that we're going live again tomorrow to actually cover more content. So <laughs> same time, same place. We're really looking forward to it. Any final words, Deb or Katrina? I know we've covered a lot and thank you so much for all the knowledge you've imparted today. I've certainly taken away a lot. I love that last point about that client manual. I, I love that because I know that our clients, a lot of them don't have that and our team members struggle when they're doing the work on a client because yeah. they don't know anything about the client. They've got to learn that as they're doing it. So any final words? I might go to you, Katrina, first. Any final yeah. parting words? Yeah, I, I think um, what I would like to impart is the importance of the planning in all of this. So planning out um, your the, the workload that you are transitioning over to your staff and planning out the, the, your next employee because they can help you build these systems as well as get your foundations right, your, your base bookkeeping, you know, the, the, the lower level and do your um, planning out and your admin stuff to, to get these systems in place and... Um, yeah, so it's it's really planning is so important, but don't take forever to do it. Like, do your planning and make an action. Yep, love <laughs> People it. love to plan and plan and plan and plan. So never that. from that plan. Excellent, Deb. Any final words? Yeah, actually, that follows on quite beautifully. Good segue there because what I was going to say was take action. Get if you are up to here and working silly hours 
you don't put it off any longer get find the person that you need and just get started with it don't aim for perfection because that's unachievable so just get started take the action and and get on the process start the journey Excellent. I, I concur with both of those comments. I always say this with every live event I speak at and every webinar and everything is, you've learnt a lot today, what are you actually going to take away and implement? Because otherwise you've spent, you know, 30 minutes listening to us and you would have got a lot of great information, but nothing changes if nothing changes. So I'm going to leave those final words. We really look forward to serving you again tomorrow, same time, same place. We're going live. We're going to have more content um, and really look forward to again sharing the the screen time with you both tomorrow so thank you for your knowledge and experience and look forward to chatting tomorrow bye-bye see you all bye